If you're making multicolor prints using Tinkercad, some people just export the file and then paint it inside the slicer. Or some people take the individual items and do individual STL files and then group them all together in a slicer so they can just color each individual item. But there's limitations on both those methods. There's actually an easier and better way in Tinkercad. And I'll show you how to do it on today's Film of Friday. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Here's a simple design that I created. It's a robot head. It's got two eyes and a mouth. And each of these are individual items. So I've got this block, which was created with a block element or a box element. I have a mouth that's created with a box element, but I changed the color to orange. Then I've got two eyes, which are made from a cylinder, which I made into blue. So they're each individual items, and I just slid them over on top of each other. And the eyes and the mouth actually recess into the block and stick out about 0.2 millimeters. Now that we have our design, we can union group everything and export it as one STL file. So union group has been around forever. You just grab all the pieces, click on union group, and it combines all those individual pieces into one. And then you export that as a single .stl file. And from that, you can bring the .stl file into your slicer. In this case, I'm using Bamboo Studio because we're going to use an A1 Mini with the MS to print it. And once you have the file inside of it, it really just treats it as any other single color .stl file. So from here, we can actually slice it. And you'll see how it's different because, first of all, it's only 18 minutes to print. But it's going to be different than a multicolor print. So if I slide it down here, you can see the eyes are just part of the walls. And the mouth towards the bottom is just part of the walls. It doesn't go in any deeper. It doesn't treat it as an individual block. It's just part of the walls. Now, because they're all combined to do color printing, I have to paint it. So you go to the paint tool, and I'm using fill. And you can just click on the color and then click on the item. And like I said, they're sticking out, so it's a little bit easier. But then you end up with these edges that also need to be painted. So every little item has these edges depending on how much it's sticking out. And the mouth has four different sides that I got to paint. So I have to go into the paint tool again, grab the color, and then get the edges. So I'm getting the edges of the eyes here, the blue. And then if I click on orange, then I can come down here and get the edges of the mouth. But it's two edges on top and then two edges kind of on the side and on the bottom. So it's a lot of painting if you have a lot of different items that you're marking up on your multicolor print. And something strange happens when you slice this. So it's been painted and it says one hour and 41 minutes. So it's got to change color so it's going to take longer. But look at when I slide down. Suddenly the eyes got deeper. It just automatically chose randomly where to put the extra colors. And look at the mouth. The mouth goes way deep into the block. I, I didn't go that deep on the design, so I don't know where it gets this. But this is how the slicer treats it. Let's go back to where we started. Let's get rid of all the painting. So now we've got our grouped together block. But it was built from individual pieces. So it'd be nice if I could go into the objects menu over here and see all the different objects that made up this 3D print. But it doesn't. It only shows one block. Now, there is an option in the slicer to split it into multiple pieces, but it's grayed out here because this was union grouped. It's treating it as one individual file, not a bunch of different pieces. So if you union group it, you can easily print it as one color, but if you want to do multicolors, then you got to paint each individual piece. And if you have a complicated design that has multiple pieces to paint, that can get tedious. So another option some people use is they take each individual object and export it as an individual STL file. And then you grab all those STL files and bring them in at once into the slicer. And that gives you an advantage. Let me explain. Here's our original design again, and it's not grouped. I got rid of the union group. So I have individual pieces, the eyes and the mouth and the block. And what I'm going to do is individually export each one. So the left eye, I'm going to export it as a .stl file. And then I'm going to go get the right eye, export it, .stl file. Then I'll get the mouth, 
export it, .stl file. Then finally, the head. I'll click on the head, and then I'll export and make that its own STL file. So now I've got four files that make up this design. And then when I go to the slicer to import it, I grab all of those. Here's the head, here's the mouth, and here's the two eyes. And then I import those, and it asks me, do I want to bring it in as a single object with multiple parts? I said yes. And what that does is now it's together, and the eyes and mouth are in the proper place, but the slicer knows these are four different items. So when I go over to the objects menu and I click on the arrow to expand it, I'm on a Mac, you wouldn't see this on a PC, but I click on it and now I can see the individual pieces, the two eyes, the mouth, and then the head. So I've got four different blocks and they show a color next to them. So this is much easier because now I can select it, click on the color, and then click on it again to select a different color and do this for each individual piece. So now I'm not painting, I'm just changing the whole element to a particular color, all the way through, edges and everything. And then I've got my multicolor print. So it's much easier than having to paint everything. And then I slice it, and it takes longer, like I said, because it's a multicolor print. But now I can scroll through it, and I'll show you how it looks. When I scroll through, the eyes look just like I designed them, two little pucks. And the mouth? A small little block. So it didn't change the shape like it did in the union group. It came out just as I would expect. Now let me show you a relatively new option available in Tinkercad, and that's using the bundle group. You can actually bundle everything together, not a union group which combines everything, but a bundle group which keeps each individual piece as a standalone piece, but they're grouped together as one file. And then you can export that and bring that in to the slicer and it gives you a lot of that benefits of individual files, but the simplicity of a union grouped file. I'm back to the original design where the eyes and the mouth and the block are all separate, but I can group them together using the new bundle group. This is new in Tinkercad. It's bundle group instead of union group. And what it does is it groups them together, but they're not merged together like union group would do. So I can move this around within Tinkercad and they stay in place but they're still individual items. And then if I export it as a bundle group, as a single STL, when I bring it into the slicer, a single file, not a bunch of files, it maintains that separate pieces. Now, I don't know why it does a little different shading on the eye there, but each of these pieces are individual parts. Now, we still have the option to go into the paint tool and do just like we did with the union group, select each item with the color, paint it, and then we still gotta get those edges, which is, like I said, can be tedious if you have a lot of these different elements. It can also be tedious if you have a lot of different parts, so you gotta make each individual file and bring it in together. That takes some time. And this is the advantage of using the bundle group, is I can go to the individual file, right click on it, and then the split menu appears, and I can split it into parts. And once it's into parts, then over on the objects menu, it's going to show me all those individual pieces, just like the individual files did. But now I can go into here, which was one file brought in, and I can change the color of each individual part that showed up when I split it. So here's the block. I'm going to leave that red. Here's the eye, the right eye. I'm going to make that blue by click on it, click on it again, and then click on blue and then go to the next eye, click on it, click on the red, and then click on blue, and then finally go to the mouth, click on it, click on the color, and then click on orange. And now I've got the same effect as bringing in a bunch of individual files, but I did it as one file because I used the bundle group. And you can see there's no edges to paint, just like before when I brought in individual files. So now I can slice this, and it's gonna give me a time now, it's actually a little bit less time than the individual files grouping. I don't know why that is, but it's close. And now if I scroll down, you see it looks just like the individual files. It's creating the puck eyes like I designed it in Tinkercad, and it's going to create the block mouth just like I did in Tinkercad. It's not stretching this thing like it did when I union grouped it and painted it. So paint treats it differently. This comes out exactly how I would expect it. 
Now I did slices for my A1 Mini with the AMS system and I got three colors on it, the red, orange, and blue. And I did get a little overrun on the eye and the mouth, but there's a reason for that. Now I didn't use a wipe tower on this print to save a little time and it cost me because I got a little blob on the eye and the mouth, but I just wanted a quick prototype to, to hold my hand for the video. If I did it again, I'd do the wipe tower and get a lot cleaner print on the A1 Mini with the AMS. So there you have a quick little tip to make multicolor printing from Tinkercad a little easier by using the new bundle group. If you're looking for a professional service to do things like CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, or injection molding, check out PCBWay.com. It's also where I get circuit boards. You can get 10 pieces for $5 and assembly services of electronics for as low as $29. I use it all the time and I highly recommend it. I've been using PCBWay circuit boards for years. So check out PCBWay.com. I want to give a big thank you to my Patreon supporters who are with me every month. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is the best way to do it. And if nothing else, click on the logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Chuck Hollowbox Electronic Products and Filament Friday.